Well, can you hear that? That's the sound of a clock that's out of beat. And not because it's tilted one way or the other, but because there's another problem. Hello Internet and welcome back to my shop. Today's video, I want to show you on this cuckoo clock what's going on with why it's sounding out of beat and why I'm having to use this three pound weight in order to keep the clock running. It's not just indicative of a cuckoo clock. It can be a problem on just about any clock. On this cuckoo clock with a large movement that is what I call more of a, a, a simple movement than what you would find maybe in a a French movement or a fine English clock. The results are going to be the same and it'll be really emphasized on this big movement and easier for me to demonstrate what's going on. So here you can see I'm using a time tracks to demonstrate what's going on with the balance. Typically, it's always better if the numbers remain below 20, both in the negative and positive. Those are pretty good numbers for a movement. Ultimately, zero and zero would be perfect. That's rare with antique clocks. So as you can hear, it's jumping around and almost pausing in between beats. No matter how much you tilt this clock to try to get it into beat, you're going to see, I'm going to swing it to the left. You can hear the audible difference and see the difference in numbers. Now I'm going to bring it back to center just a very little bit. Now I'm going to go back ever so slightly and I'm going to swing it to the right. You'll see the numbers increasing and start to hear an audible difference. Clearly out of beat. If I bring it back to that center, the best spot that I can get in terms of sound and numbers, the numbers are still off. Okay, here we are on the bench. I got the movement out and this center train here is the time train. And here is the escape wheel right here. And what I want to show you is the out of tolerance movement in the escape wheel pivot hole and the intermediate wheel pivot hole which is just above this lever here. So I'm going to take and articulate that wheel. I'm going to hold back the anchor. You can see the movement in here. Right in there. And down in here just above that lever on the intermediate wheel, which is just above the great wheel. And if you watch the intermediate wheel, wow, you can just see a whole bunch of lateral movement. It's literally moving left and right. Okay? That's enough to throw it off. Now before we start taking this apart, Again, if you're a beginner, take a lot of photos so you can remember the position uh, of everything. But the main thing that I like to do, especially on these cuckoo and quail movements where you've got three trains, um, you want to take note of the pins in the lock position and mark that location it'll make it a lot easier when you go to put these back together. So on the um, quail side, the pin I'm going to reference is right there. This pin, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a mark up here on the cast plate, even if it's just temporary with a pen, 
and then when I get it apart I'm going to take a chisel or a punch and I'm going to make a definite mark that can't rub off. Same on the cuckoo side. That one's a little easier. So what I do is I just actuate it, make sure that it's in the perfect lock position. And I, I just want to take note of the closest pin to the side of the plate, which is this one here. And I'm going to note that it's right here, lined up right below this lift lever. It's always helpful when taking these monsters apart, trying to get them back together again. So now's a good time to mark these, uh, what you're going to have to do as far as bushing work. The ratchet wheels ratchets this way, therefore engages this direction. So I'm going to look at it and the direction that it throws it is the direction that I'm going to put a mark. So I know that it's worn in that direction. So we're going to turn it around and I can see that it's dropping it in this direction. So I'll make a mark and the escape wheel, that was the intermediate wheel, and now the escape wheel it's pulling it up toward me in this direction. So I'm going to mark it like this. Okay. Also, don't forget, you might as well go ahead and check the rest of the other trains. Um, as long as you have it apart, that's the time to do the pushing work. You don't want to take it apart twice. And this one this looks pretty good. The fan is okay. These are strike trains and they're not always as critical. Um, but again, if they're worn, you might as well work on them while you have it apart. I also will point out even as many of clocks that I have done. I love this triple compartment container and I, I like to put all the parts belonging to in, in that same direction. So time train, cuckoo, and uh, quail. And it just facilitates putting everything back together. Just a little tidbit. Okay, got the new bushing in, put the corresponding cog in there, give it a wiggle, and that's too tight, so I'm going to broach it out a little bit. Always don't forget to broach from both sides. That's uh, better. Okay, next up, it's important to address this <clears throat> escape wheel here. So, as you can see, I'm going to stop on the arrow on the, the bad teeth. You can see that one there is bent. That one's bent. Oh, they're all in a little bit of rough condition. And if I do have some shorter than others after I straighten them out with a to straightener, I'm going to put it on the lathe and we're going to top off this wheel. This is the Webster tooth straightener, quite a precarious tool. And uh, when I first bought it, I thought, oh wow, once I learned how to use it, it's actually pretty darn effective. Uh, it's a little, takes a little bit of time getting to understand the tool and and understand how it works. So here's a bad tooth right here and I'm going to try to demonstrate how this works. So once you get the jig set up you place it on the tooth that you want to straighten and you're going to simultaneously pinch this pair of pliers 
which is going to hold it and then simultaneously you're going to pull back on this piece here which is going to rub across the tooth and straighten it back out because out at the very tips they're pretty fragile pretty delicate um, and you really need to have support on the back side of it to to keep it in the position that it's supposed to be in okay so that straightened that tooth out pretty nicely let's find another bent one here uh, how about this one right here I'm going to come around to it and I'm going to put the pliers in there and I'm going to pinch down and simultaneously pull back with my finger on the other one. So now I'm going to just go around and uh, have a look and see if I see any more teeth that are awkward or bent. And I do see one here, right here. I'm going to pinch that. But once you get the hang of it, it, it's pretty effective. Okay, so it looks like I got all the teeth straight. Now I'm going to take it, put it on the lathe, and we're going to top it. I've got it set up on the lathe. Have the escape wheel uh, so that it's closest to the chuck so that I can keep true center. And then I've just put a fine grinding stone in my cross slide uh, so that I can bring it in real slowly to just grind the tip of the escapement wheel. So I'm going to listen for when it hits the first tooth and get as close to uh, an even grinding sound, but I don't want to take off too much. up on that. Okay. Just kind of go around and look and see if I've got shine on the tips of all of the teeth. I see two here that are uh, one that's slightly low but it looks like most of them are now evenly ground. Didn't have to take off much. Now I'm going to take it out of the lathe and I'm just going to take a little bit of quadruple aught steel wool and just kind of pull across that and get any sharp edges that I've created on the uh, teeth. And we'll go put it back in the movement and see how it looks. Okay, as you can hear, the ticking sounds much better. The balance numbers are far better than they were. And I'm now running the clock on two pounds nine ounces as opposed to that three pound fourteen nearly four pound weight so we got our power back and we got our numbers down I didn't have to put all the trains together to test it that way I can take it back apart if I need to make some adjustment I think we're sounding pretty good now comes the fun part put the rest of the trains back together and get it indexed so the cuckoo and the quail trigger correctly. Okay, it's the next day. I've got the movement all put back together with the weights. And now is the optimum time to check the trains and make sure that they are 
uh, uh, indexed and syncing correctly. And that's the first quarter hour, second quarter hour, third quarter. Now there goes the warning for the quail, the warning for the cuckoo. Gonna activate 12 times there on the count wheel. Count lever drops in and it locks. It's definitely a good idea to check it before you put it in the case. You'll notice that the movement is slightly tilted. I'm not going to change that until I put it into the case and then I'll make the adjustment with the crutch however it's necessary uh, because the movement may not be entirely straight inside of the case. And once I put it in the case that will determine what I have to do to the crutch to get the balance. That's the sound of a clock that's back end beat. I've also accomplished going back to the original weight away from that nearly four pound weight and brought the power back by doing the bushing work on the time train. And to remove that erratic beat uh, to where I couldn't get it into balance, uh, worked on the escape wheel, correcting those bent teeth and then grinding it to get the wheel back to round closer to what it was when it was first made. When you're working on clocks, taking up them apart to clean and so forth, you want to take care of this wheel because as you can see, it doesn't take much to throw off the balance and the tick-tocking of the clock. I've also cleaned up the carving a bit, carved a new quail door for the mismatched door that was on there, and I did have to do a slight bit of adjusting on the crutch wire in order for the clock to be straight on the wall and have the balance where it needs to be. Here we are at the back of the clock. You can see everything is back together and functioning like it should. The um, crutch wire here you'll notice is nice and straight and that is because I made my adjustments uh, by removing the pallet assembly which consists of an arbor, an anchor, and the crutch wire that comes out of the back of the movement. And I made those bends, or I made that bend, right up here where the crutch wire goes into the arbor. You have to remove it in order to, to do this, uh, which, which just means removing uh, this verge plate and taking it out. Um, you want to be careful that the verge plate is pinned, that when you put it back it's in the exact same position. Otherwise, uh, if I get the escape wheel here um, and show you, you are changing the depthing of that anchor in relationship to the uh, escape wheel. So, um, you know, if you're comfortable doing that, great. If not, then just it's, it's perfectly fine to bend the crutch wire uh, at any point along here. The further up towards this elbow that you bend it, the smaller the bends are going to be. And I do want to show you and mention a good tool to have in your workshop is a wire bending tool and I've made this one out of a old screwdriver. Cut the tip off, ground a slot in the uh, tip of it and give it a bend. I'm going to do an accentuated bend 
Um, so it gives you a lot of control and again if you bend it up here towards this elbow your bends are going to be really small. You can bend it by hand by just uh, uh, grasping it and giving it a little tweak one way or the other because it may not be much. You might not even see the bend. That's how small of an adjustment you may need. So as far as what direction to bend that wire I'll use this little tiny clock as an example. Here's how I do it. And here's how I remember it. If the clock is tilted to the right, okay, as you invert that clock to the back, it is essentially now tilted to the left. Take note of the raised bottom corner, bend your crutch wire in that direction, and then it will bring that bottom corner down. And you do that until you get it into beat. Just make your bends real small um, so that you don't overshoot it. Just be careful not to uh, put pressure on that crutch wire to where you're bending it, you're swiveling it this direction or this direction and misaligning it with the um, pendulum post. Okay, I want to thank you for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And hopefully we'll see you back here soon for another episode of Vintage and Antique Black Forest Cuckoo Clock Repair. See you then.